Uh, so next we start with the next part of the lecture uh, on transient stability analysis uh, using the method, uh, what we call it as equilibrium criteria. Uh, what we have discussed uh, yesterday, last time, uh, it was the, for the case of uh, equilibrium criteria being discussed for a sudden change in the turbine power. Now, uh, if you refer to my previous slide, we had this one. So the initial operating point uh, was PMO, and uh, we have change in the turbine mechanical power, sudden change in the turbine mechanical power to PM1. Now, yesterday, somebody, uh, someone of you have asked me that uh, when we have the integral, uh, it looks like uh, you integrate and then uh, the area is rectangular. So I had my answer, uh, response saying that it can be for the linear part of the P delta characteristic here because it depending upon what is the initial operating point and what is the change in new operating point. So following that, uh, the area may be rectangular. But if there is a uh, change in the operating point uh, towards the nonlinear part, as we discuss here, then the area may not be exactly uh, rectangular. So we have a case that uh, uh, where we have the change in the turbine power. Uh, for the case where you satisfy the equilibrium criteria, so that means now we want, as I said earlier, that. Uh, we have an area one, and now we have an area two. So we have to match the, we have to equalize the area two. Right? We have to get a condition such that region two, area two becomes equal to A1 and thereby maintain the stability. So here we want to decide we want to decide the operating point that means we want to know what should be the change in the turbine mechanical power so that the area two becomes equal to area one without losing the stability here so let's say that we have a sudden change and stability is maintained so that area two is made equal to area one here now for the case shown here for the case shown here, uh, now we have the change in the turbine mechanical power this much magnitude. Now, this was the initial operating point, and we have a large change in the turbine mechanical power. Right? And this is your angle delta one here now. It is this one. So your so new operating point is near about delta one. And let us say that rotor angle will cross this point and reaches to this angle uh, what we have it as delta 2 and then again rotor will swing back and forth and it will let us see whether in this case if the rotor swings up to this point then in that case area 2 is defined by this region right however the area 1 is defined by this region so in this case what you observe area 2 is less than area 1 so because it was up to this point, up to this angle, delta 2, rotor started to swing back. It is safe some, for some reason. All right. So what we have it here, rotor starts to swing back. And as such, area 2 is less than area 1. And for this situation, area 2 will never be equal to area 1. And thus, here, whatever the energy which was stored here, all right, that is not released during this period. It is not released here. And thus, area 2 will never be equal to area 1 now. So, in that case, generator will keep on oscillating here, right? So, for this case, so now we have to see what should be the change in the turbine mechanical power so that area 2 is made equal to area 1. So that means this area we have to modify. We have to adjust this area so that it becomes equal to area one when we change the turbine mechanical. Because this area one is defined by how much change in the turbine mechanical power you apply from the initial point. So if the initial point was somewhere here, then you can change it. 
But if your initial point is somewhere here, then you cannot change much. All right. So for this case stone, we have the initial point here, and we have a somewhat this must change. So, and thus we define this the area now, area one, and here we define area two. So for this case, we observe that area two is less than area one, and that is a uh, acceleration momentum cannot be overcome by the release of energy during the area two movement. Yeah. So for this case, uh, that means now we have to see what should be the change in the turbine mechanical power here. So now for this case, uh, we define the area one as by this relationship. So we have it uh, the movement of uh, angle from delta zero to delta one and uh, integral of uh, PM one to PE here, right? In the same way, uh, when you have to say uh, define for area two, it will perform angle delta one to angle delta two here. The angle delta to here and then again same way pm1 minus pe here. so that is area 2 but in this case area 2 is less than area 1 now how we should we uh, make area 2 that means how should we may adjust area 2 become equal to area 1 for a given change in the turbine power here that we have applied here so to adjust that so we want to have an increase in the turbine mechanical power being limited. It is, it is to be limited to an extent where the maximum angle is reached with the intersection of line PM and for a P delta characteristic for an angle lying between 90 degree to 180 degree. So now for the previous slide, what we have discussed here, we say that area 2 is less than area 1. So now for this case, this must change the turbine power that we have applied here, right? This must change less than. So that means now here we want to see how much change the turbine power you can achieve. All right? And it will be the this much amount PM. That means now we say this much amount PM. And it will be to it will be defined by the maximum change in the angle maximum change in the angle so that means now we are shifting this angle because in the previous slide it was this angle delta 2 it was that was the maximum limit of change of angle here so now we are shifting this angle so we shift this angle maximum angle towards this side that means along this p delta characteristic here that means beyond 90 because this is something 90 degree here right so we want to have a shift of angle delta 2 beyond 90 degree up to 180 degrees so but above the line pm but we want to shift it above the line pm so that means intersection of line pm and p angle p delta characteristic for delta lying between 90 to 180 degrees so this is 90 and this is 180 degree here but we say intersection has to be above this line pm here right like this one so we let us see how it is so we have defined this is your pm now and then in this case we have this much increase so that is the maximum limit of change in the power here, right and then as such your angle delta this one angle delta this one it is now shifted it is shifted here. all right so this is what you adjust then again another one this one the maximum limit of angle this is also now shifted right and then we say that this is your area one. This is your complete area one here. And then again, area two is now this one. So now, depending upon that, means how much change in turbine power that you have considered, following that, you allow the swing of the rotor. You allow the swing of the rotor beyond this point, beyond this point delta one, so that A2 becomes equal to. A1. So that means you allow the rotor to swing up to angle dm delta m here. So that means you allow, because in this case, you had a large change in the turbine power. You had a large change in the turbine power, right? So in this case, you have to allow the rotor angle to swing from this point to an angle crossing 90 up to this point, that is delta m, such that this area becomes equal to this area so that means now you will allow the rotor swing up to this one so it is that means rotor will cross up to this point here now 
So that means you have a large swing of rotor. So, and then in that case, uh, rotor will finally settle down to this value of new operating angle here. It is this way. Now, in this situation, you do not have the angle uh, area defined as rectangular here, right? It is not exactly rectangular. So, this is what I have to say. Uh, so, that means, so that means here we have the maximum change in the turbine power uh, achieved, making area two equal to area one. This is achieved by having the rotor angle swing up to this point of angle such that area 2 becomes equal to area 1. Yeah. So this is how we can adjust area 2 making uh, being made equal to area 1. Yeah. Right? So this is what I have uh, said actually. That means what should be the maximum increase in the turbine power yeah, such that increased angle such that the increased angle the system is critically stable. But if I say if I say turbine power is increased up to this one this one if this line is adjusted over here then it may not then this the area of a2 in that case will be always smaller than area of one here so that means if i say the turbine power has increased up to this limit then area two will be all small than area one. so that is you can say now so that means here we say what should be the maximum change the turbine power for which the angle be, is critical and the system becomes critically stable. For the increased angle, the system becomes critically stable. So, what we say, delta 1 move to the case delta C, the critical stable angle. All right. And then this delta 2 is, uh, is this one, delta C here. And then again, applying the criteria, criteria what we have it here uh, with the PM. Because we have it actually PM, which is this only now. This is PM uh, multiplied by delta difference of the angle and then integrating from delta 0 to delta 1, P max here. That is because this is PE characteristic, right? right? And then uh, integrating uh, again further from delta 1 to delta max here. With this one here. And then again, in this case, it is a PE. So P, uh, P E is P max sine of delta, delta minus P M delta. So th that means this difference we take it out here. So in this case, uh, the area defined is not uh, a rectangle one. So as you can see here, yeah, so because this is just the integral, and then we are making the difference here. So it will not be exactly rectangular. Uh, rectangular area defined for particular case. Here. Right, and then the. Uh, uh, following this, we know because uh, we have referred to mechanical power, so we say that it is PM is going to PE max sine. Because for this situation, when we say PM, the PM will be equal to PE sine delta M. Yeah. So we have it here actually P, P because in this point, PM will be equal to PE and uh, PE will be equal to your yeah, P max sine of uh, delta M. Yeah. And then uh, we say another part, this one, delta 2 move to delta m. So we have this one. So following that, uh, we are following the previous relationship, uh, we integrate it uh, here and then uh, we cancel out uh, the terms on the left hand side and right hand side. And now we get this relationship here. This is your relationship. And what we find here that also delta 0. And then again, we have some term on the left hand side. Right? And this is a nonlinear equation, which is to be solved iteratively to know to calculate delta m. As I said earlier, because here we have applied change in the turbine power. So, how much change in the turbine power you apply? For that, you have to calculate delta m. That means you have to know what should be the allowable angle swing of maximum allowable swing of rotor such that area 2 is made equal to area 1. So that means if I say you have a power of 500 megawatt here, and if I say that I change the turbine mechanical power by 300 megawatt, 
So if I say change the turbine power of 300 megawatt, that because your rated capacity, let's say it is 800 megawatt, rated capacity of a turbine is 800 megawatt, your, but the turbine is initially operating at 500 megawatt, and suddenly you want to change 300 megawatt more. Then, because you want a stable, so in that case, what should be the allowable swing of generator? That is delta M. We have to know, and such that area two is made equal to area one here. This is our objective now. So in this case, now cos of delta zero. We know it because from the previous slide, this was the initial operating point. Because when uh, turbine was generating 500 megawatt, let's say that this angle was something 28 degree or 30 degree something. So we know that. So now, so cos of 30 degree we know. Now, this term is known quantity. This right hand side is the known quantity. And we have to calculate delta M. How we calculate delta M? So we have to solve it iteratively. So that means we will make a, some guess of delta M and substitute over here and substitute over here. And then that means let's say I have uh, uh, let us, uh, you have the angle initial angle of uh, 30 degree. So let's say that you keep uh, uh, delta M now it is to 42 degree. And now, now we keep uh, angle of 42 degree. I'm saying it in degree, but you can have it in radian also. So you can keep 42 degree and then solve it. If in case after solving this left hand side is becomes equal to cos of 30 degree, then the delta M you will select it as 42 degree. If not, then if depending upon this left hand side value, whether it is a higher or lower, you change delta M accordingly here. So that means you have to solve it iteratively for different value or different value of delta M such that such that uh, this term left hand side is made equal to this term right hand side here because we know this term very well. So we can then, then that case uh, for different value of delta M left hand side we can make it to right hand side here. So this is how we do it iteratively. Now with this delta M determined, now with this delta M determined, now you can say what should be the maximum chain turbine power that you can apply. And, and this will be PM equal to P max because P, P max is constant. You know, V1, V2 by X. So this is constant and sine of delta 1. And delta 1 is your pi minus delta M. So this once we know the delta M, then you can calculate delta one and then substitute over here. So that will be the change in the turbine power that you can apply so that area two becomes equal to area one for the change in the turbine power. So this is one of the methods uh, which uh, which is applied uh, to get the stability known for a given disturbance. So so. That means here we can calculate how much disturbance you should apply right, so that the system is stable. And uh, to get the stable the response, to get the stability of the rotor angle variation, we calculate what is the maximum delta angle. Delta, what is the maximum swing of the delta angle? So this is one way of doing it. Or you can say the application of equal area criteria to define the stability uh, for a change in the turbine mechanical power. That is the maximum limit uh, that we have considered here, right? Uh, any query on the previous slide here? Right? I hope you have been able to get through what I have discussed. Okay. So we move to the next one. So now here, this is an another application of uh, uh, a criteria to analyze the stability, turn in the stability. Now, in this case, uh, what you have a generator, you have a transformer, and you have two lines. This is uh, circuit one, and this is circuit two. So there are two transmission lines and connected to infinite bus system. So remember one thing, we have said in the beginning that last, uh, in the last uh, lecture that this equilibrium criteria has to be applied for two machine systems. So this is your machine one, and this could be a large machine system here. 
So, so, so thus we have two machine system here. And, uh, and their connection is to uh, two transmission line, two parallel transmission line, here, right? So consider a situation for which the super machine is operating at a steady state, initial point. And in this case, uh, the electrical power is equal to the mechanical power. Here, right? And uh, we assume that uh, this uh, the connection to the infinite bus is through a transmission line, which is lossless. Right? If we say uh, now for this case, so for this case uh, we have the uh, excitation EMF here, and then the reactance of the generator, the reactance of the transmission, and, and uh, transmission lines here. So we get what is the equivalent reactance here, and then this is your reference voltage on the infinite bus side. So we draw this P delta characteristic. Mean. And for the initial operating point, with angle of uh, delta zero, we have a uh, EM is equal to PE. So this is your initial operating point, and this is your P delta characteristic. Right? Now, uh, you know one thing, we want to case, to case uh, have a fault uh, disturbance. Now, you should know that Normally, we have the use of circuit breaker to open the line, right? And uh, circuit breaker takes about uh, five to six cycles. So, five to six cycles means because one cycle of 50 hertz means 20 milliseconds. So, if I say that you have a circuit breaker which will open the line, so this so the line will get open in uh, 100 millisecond or 120 millisecond, right? So you have a fault, and then circuit breaker will try to open the line, and this opening will take place. Uh, opening of the line will take place uh, by in uh, 120 or 100 millisecond. Now. In fact, this is actually a slow acting circuit breaker. But now we have a fast acting circuit breaker, and in this case, uh, we can have the opening of a line in 1.5 cycle or 2 cycle. So that means if you have a fault, and then the circuit breaker can make the line open in just uh, 30 millisecond or in 40 millisecond. That is possible, right? So. One thing you should understand here that the fault duration, the fault duration is 100 millisecond or 200 millisecond. Right? Fault takes place and fault duration is 200 millisecond. So, if you take a, take a circuit breaker which will open in for in 100 millisecond or 120 millisecond so fault duration is longer in this situation when the circuit breaker tries to open at 100 millisecond or 110 or 120 millisecond then circuit breaker will get a alarm indicating that the fault is still persist that means there is still a fault continuing for longer duration. So what will happen? For circuit breaker will try to close, but it will not close because fault is of longer duration. It is 200 milliseconds. All right. So in that situation, the, for the circuit breaker will not close back actually. All right. That is one thing because the fault is, is still longer. All duration is longer. So the circuit breaker has opened, but it will not close the line back. So circuit breaker will still remain open in that situation. This is what I said. So that's why I said that if the circuit breaker opens in 100 millisecond or 120 millisecond, then it is possible that following that, the for that means for the next few cycles, the line is closed back line has to be closed back if the fault is over if the fault the duration 
call duration is over, then the circuit breaker should be able to close the line back because we want to restore the power flow, right? But if for a situation call duration is more than five cycles or the six cycles, right? Then circuit breaker has opened it. Circuit breaker has opened the line, right? But circuit breaker will try to close back. When the circuit breaker finds that the call duration is longer, it will not close back. It, this we call it as re-striking of circuit breaker. So this sometimes depending upon the manufacturer, uh, circuit breaker tries to open and close uh, uh, for two times or three times. And if the circuit breaker finds that uh, two times uh, it has tried to uh, close back, the line and the fault is, is still remaining, then it will keep the line open. It will not close back now further. So that happens. So now in this situation, uh, input power on the other hand that is supplied by the prime mover, is the load out, and this is uh, through the steam turbine. Now again, time comes to the turbine system here. It is a few seconds. So that means, let's see, circuit breaker opening time it is in millisecond 100 millisecond 200 millisecond maximum or it is 120 millisecond here right fall duration is to 100 uh, millisecond or 150 millisecond or maximum 200 millisecond but the operating time time constant of the turbine system this is in some second one second so one second means 1000 millisecond you can say right and thus again while the other electrical systems, they all have also time constant of millisecond here. Now, that's for all practical purpose. What we find here that because circuit breaker operating time it is a millisecond. Circuit breaker opens and then close or not. In that case, this is in millisecond. So circuit breaker will experience that the mechanical power is constant because its operation time it is in second. It is in seconds. So, as such, the mechanical power experienced seen by the circuit breaker, it is now constant during the transient period of fault. Right? So, when we have a transient period, then in that case, the electrical power remains constant. Actually. So, that means you cannot change the turbine power because when the fault takes place, that means you cannot reduce the turbine power exactly to zero. That means it stays here. But the one power has a time constant, which is of two seconds. This transient instability for this case concentrates on the ability of the power system to recover from the fault right, and deliver the power constant power PM with a new change of angle. So here it is more challenging because turbine power remains constant. But the circuit breaker, which operates in milliseconds, so it there because when the line gets stripped out, that's, that means the electrical power becomes zero, right? So or maybe it's something else. So in that case, the mechanical power does not become zero instantaneously. So this will be a challenge: how to maintain the uh, uh, stability. That means to recover the system to the new operating point. It will be difficult. And that's uh, what should be the uh, load anchor here. That will be the challenge here to determine. Now, to do this, uh, to, for this kind of analysis, uh, we consider three different uh, cases. Uh, that means the time period. One is the pre fault. So, when you say the pre fault, that means before the fault, what is the situation? What is the system uh, uh, initial point? Or what was the situation existed? Uh, in the system uh, before the pre fault, because before the pre fault, the system will be at equilibrium because the system is operating normal way. Right, so it will be during the pre uh, pre fault. But during this fault condition, then here the uh, dynamics changes. Yeah. Right, so because different systems they have their uh, own dynamic involved because circuit breaker in millisecond. Your turbine in seconds, same way the generator operates in second. Dynamics involved of the generator or the turbines, they are in uh, in seconds, but uh, circuit breaker, they are in milliseconds. So thus, uh, it will be difficult to how to uh, get the equilibrium point here. Then again, another last one is the fault clear. After the fault clearance, because 
after the fall crane, the situation may change. So thus the uh, system has to restore back to the, uh, not to the original point. In some cases, it, it has to be restored back to the original point or otherwise the system has to change to the new operating point. Okay, so it depends. Okay. So after the fall clearance, uh, the system, that's why it is written here, the system should hopefully, we are not sure whether, when the system returns to the new operating point, whether it remains stable or not. We are not sure about it. So that's why it is written, system hopefully returns to the new operating point and becomes stable. We are, we are not sure about it. That's why it is written here. Hopefully, it will return to the new operating point. That is all. Now, uh, here we discuss about the same P delta characteristic and defining the criteria, criteria for a fault case here. Right. But here again, uh, we say that the fault is being cleared before the critical angle is reached. We will dis describe the critical angle later on. Right. So now for this uh, P delta characteristic as shown here, right? So this is your PM, uh, that is your, you can say the initial condition. This is your initial condition. And for this case, uh, what you have actually PM is equal to PE, right? So at this point, uh, PL, this is initial point. So PM uh, is equal to PE here. Now we have a fault. But in the same uh, circuit, okay, in the same uh, previous equivalent uh, circuit, what we have shown. So let's say the fault is at sending end. I mean, the fault is uh, here, uh, over here. I mean, the fault is here. So if the fault is here, that means it's not at the receiving end, but it is just at the generator terminal or at the bus bar here. Yeah. So if the fault takes place here, what happens? So when the fault, uh, this is the initial condition, and when the fault takes place at the sending end, then suddenly, that means the circuit breaker opens the line. All right. So when the fault takes place, uh, circuit breaker gets the alarm and it uh, trips the line. So it opens the line here now at the same time. So power becomes, electrical power will become zero. That means, just see, your angle is delta zero. Generator angle is delta zero, but with the opening of the line, electrical power flow in the line becomes zero because suddenly the line is tipped off. So the electrical power becomes zero with the angle at delta zero. Delta zero is not zero now. Delta zero is at some value here. Let's say 25 degree, 28 degree, which is not exactly zero because. When we see the P delta characteristics, so if the electrical power becomes zero, then the delta zero should also be zero. No, but in this case, electrical power becomes zero, but angle, initial angle remains as it is now, right? So electrical power flow in the line is now zero, right? But as such, what would happen? As such, electrical power is less than P M here now. It is less than P M. Because so what you have it here, PM minus PE, PE becomes zero and PM will be equal to accelerating power. So because of accelerating power, now rotor angle will increase. So rotor angle will increase from delta zero to some other value, right? And let us say that rotor angle has increased to some value. So as the rotor angle increases to some value let's say delta one here right so during this period during this period electrical power is zero but rotor angle increases to delta one and let us say at this point and for the say uh, for the figure shown uh, for the sketch shown let us consider that uh, for, let's say uh, when the rotor angle was uh, increasing and then in that case because this is change uh, this change in the angle will be in uh, some uh, seconds actually, right? And uh, your fault, let's say if I say fault duration is 50 millisecond only, right? So if the fault duration is 50 millisecond, then, and let us assume that the fault is cleared by this circuit breaker. So if the fault is cleared by the fault duration is 50 millisecond and the fault is cleared by the circuit breaker, so that means 
circuit breaker will not close the line. Circuit breaker has fault is clear in 50 millisecond, and then again in the next 50 millisecond, uh, the fault is cleared by the circuit breaker. Right. So what will happen? The line is closed back. So when the line is closed back, now the power would flow in the line. So but now when the circuit breaker has closed the line and with the fall, after the fault clearance, the line is connected back in the system. Uh, but now in this case, PE is, uh, will be defined at angle delta 1. And then suddenly, PE will increase to this value. So, because this is angle delta 1. So at increased value of angle uh, delta 1, electrical power has changed to this point. So earlier it was here. But it is now with the increased delta 1, PE becomes this one. Now, again, what do you have it here? PM is constant because we are not changing turbine power. So now in this situation, what you find here for this position of angle, PE is more than PM. So we will have PE more than PM. But again, what you had? Rotor uh, speed actually. It is uh, more than synchronous. So uh, what will happen? It will move further. It will move further. But during this phase, what you have actually, PE is greater than PM. It will uh, it will slow down. Rotor speed during this phase will slow down. And but still, rotor angle increases up to this point. Let's say this increase uh, which can be delta two here. So it can be any value along this line. It can be any one. Okay, all right. So, uh, so now that means after this point, rotor angle will swing up to this point. But again, this is now deacceleration. Again, rotor will come back. All right. And then again, it will swing here. So that is will be possible. So now in the next stage, what you find here that here the fault was cleared. All right. And then uh, rotor will change here. Because at this point, as I said that because of the inertia, rotor angle because angle is changing with respect to time and it is increases up to this point here, right and in the next case step now if we say that this uh, rotor swing the acceleration area beyond this point defining the area to area two is such that it is equal to area one then both areas are so that means now this clearance of the fault, that means closing of the line, and then that means it is this angle. And then again, rotor swinging further beyond this point, it is this angle. Now these two angles will define the area two region, which is now being equal, made equal to area one, such that the two are equal and what would happen area angle will swing here then again the pm has not changed line is restored back that means you have a power flow so what would happen thus the initial condition will be achieved that means system is restored back to the same initial point in this case system is not changing to new operating point you know one thing System is not changing to new operating point here, but system is restored back to the same initial point. This is an example where you have system was operating at initial point following the disturbance, and then again the system comes back to the same initial point here. So that's uh, and but maintaining the system stability. So this will be the case where the two area are. And this is, we have said it, for, for the fault being cleared before the critical angle. So, but again, it depends upon how fast your circuit breaker are, and then uh, what is the fault duration. Because if the fault duration is longer, I said that because when I discussed this one, I said that the fault duration is just 50 millisecond. If the fault duration is 50 millisecond, then in that case, uh, after 50 millisecond, uh, fault is over. And then your circuit breaker is able to close the line back. So when the uh, let's say uh, in another 50 millisecond, uh, line is closed back here. 
So that's the line in a stored back and the power will flow in the line and then rotor angle will swing to this one and such that the area two will become equal to area one. So here we have to decide for a given system, what should be the uh, operation of circuit breaker? What should be the operation of circuit breaker such that area two is made equal to area one here and thereby achieve the stability uh, in the system of that is one part, right? Uh, but again, uh, because it is possible that the some circuit breaker may be slow in operation. If the circuit breaker is slow in operation, then the rotor may swing further. It may increase rotor angle may swing to further value. We will discuss more in the later slide. Right? Now, here I have a question. What about the stability? If the fault is not clear. And the angle of torque is to increase and the angle of torque is to increase. Sir, who decide the operating point here? And what what are the operating points? New operating points, I mean. Uh, in this case, uh, in this case, the operating point, right? Because we assume that uh, we because the, this was the initial operating point. Fault takes place, uh, the sending end, power becomes zero, but we assume that the power uh, fault is of 50 millisecond, and in the next 50 millisecond, the circuit breaker closes the line, right? It closes the line, so PE becomes this, and but still rotor angle continues to increase. But again, that means this part. The, op uh, the operation of the circuit breaker in closing the line back, it depends upon what is the operating time of the circuit breaker. Then again, this part, the swing of the rotor to the maximum value of delta, the swing of the rotor beyond this point, it again all depends upon what is the mass of the rotor actually, here, what is the size of the generator and its mass. So this part we have to know. That means in how much time, in how much time the rotor angle will swing by what degree or by what radian. This is important here. Right? And then again, rotor swinging back to the this uh, back to the initial operating point. That is bigger. So thus here we have to know at what instant the circuit breaker should operate and to the what maximum angle the rotor should swing. So that area two becomes equal to area one, and the system is restored back to the same operating point. We have to estimate this power. Actually. But again, it is very difficult to know what to be the fault during the because uh, normally it is said that uh, in most of the cases, uh, fault duration is of uh, something hundred millisecond. But fault can be temporary, right? So if the fault is temporary, so it can be 50 millisecond, it can be 60 millisecond, and, and in fact, it can be even 120 millisecond or 150 millisecond. But if the fault is of a longer duration, let's say more than 200 millisecond or 300 millisecond or 400 millisecond, then it is something like permanent fault. So if it is a permanent fault, then line will not be restored back. All right, circuit breaker will not close the line back. And thereby the power to flow. So in that case, the turbine has to be shut down. This is another. So in this case, initial operating point uh, that means will not be restored back. That is what I can say. And uh, here I have a question that uh, if the fault is not clear here and rotor angle continues to increase right, and it is clear at this angle, then what about that? Where will be the area two here? Can anybody say? Let's say that a fault is cleared somewhere here. Then the area one will be this one. This is your area one, right? And then uh, when the fault is cleared at this angle, and then in fact, rotor angle will swing. So rotor angle will swing up to this point. That means it is this angle. Or the rotor will swing up to this point. Or the rotor will swing up to this point. Or the rotor will swing up to this point. What is your? So in that case, can we have the stability for the for this area for this angle of clearance? Can we say 
uh, area two made be, being made equal to area one. Can we define it? We will discuss it later on. Here, uh, this one actually, say increase in the angle from delta 1 to delta 2 and being cleared, fault is being cleared here at a larger angle here now. For this case, of what will be the area code? Now, here we have the fault being cleared with the critical angle. This was the case with the before critical angle, right? So, that means what should be the critical angle? such that area 2 is made equal to area 1 that is important here so that means what should be the longest time of operation of the circuit breaker that means because when we delay when we delay that means when we delay the circuit breaker closing the line that means we allow the generator rotor to swing further to increase further actually so what should be the maximum allowable time for circuit breaker to close the line that is important here and that is your uh, critical angle so here we can see, discuss the case where the fault is being cleared in the critical angle so it is uh, same we consider the same initial operating point here so when we have this initial operating point so there is no acceleration because the acceleration power is zero here and let us assume the same thing uh, electrical power uh, there is a fault at the setting end so during this period, uh, electrical power becomes zero, right? So this, we have a three-phase fault. All right. So because if it is a three-phase fault, then only power will be zero. Otherwise, if it is a single-phase fault or a two-phase fault, uh, there will be still some power flow in the remaining healthy line. Because if I say line to ground fault, so that means uh, remaining two healthy phases, there will be a power flow. So in that case, the electrical power flow does not become exactly zero. So here we say a three, right, and that's why the power becomes zero uh, at this point. But rotor angle will continue to increase here. All right. So here we have the power reduced to zero, and then again, uh, this is your uh, steady state uh, mechanical power, right? And then uh, this one that is remain constant, and then. Uh, when the uh, power, electrical power becomes zero, but rotor angle will continue to increase during the period of fault. Yeah, right? And for this case, we want to define an angle. We want to define an angle such that area, because at this instant, when the line is closed, at this instant, uh, that means at this angle, when the circuit breaker closes the line, electrical power becomes this one now and then but rotor angle will continue to swing it will continue to increase it may continue over here or it may continue over here or it may over it may be over here so what should be the maximum swing of rotor which is allowable for the critical angle such that area two is made equal to area one that is important So it is this one now at this instant uh, when we have it because this is the maximum one all right so because at this point the rate of change of uh, angle is zero so now if in case uh, uh, due to the malfunction of the line circuit vector will open and reduce the real power to zero it is because of that reason uh, i have missed this point now uh for we want to analyze it how it will be actually right initially uh, when we have uh, this point uh, we have uh, accelerating power to be zero right and uh, uh, during this path uh, electrical power uh, becomes zero in this one and then rotor angle uh, continues to change to the new open point in fact uh, let me see uh, because for this situation, uh, what we had actually, uh, because PM remains constant here, right? And electrical power becomes zero when the fault takes place here, right? And as such, this PM power becomes equal to accelerating power here, and that is a constant power. This accelerating power is constant here. And as such, uh, you have actually PM equal to PA and PE equal to zero uh, at this part here, right? 
Now, because of this reason, machine will accelerate here. Yeah. Machine will is accelerate. So that means machine angle will increase from delta zero and it will go on. Right. And then uh, let's uh, say that at this instant the fault is clear. All right. And then rotor will swing further. Okay. Good. So I discuss in the next slide now. Now this difference in the power, right, gives you what is the rate of change of stored energy in the mass. Our rotor will accelerate because we have a constant uh, inflow because we have a constant uh, power turbine power because this is non-zero so, and that is the accelerating power is equal to turbine power hence the angle will continue to increase and let us say that at angle delta c that means here at angle delta c this is a let us define the critical angle uh, where the circuit breaker will Declose the line. So remember one thing: circuit breaker at this instant has opened the line. At this instant, circuit breaker has opened the line, and that's why the power becomes zero. And but angle continues to increase. There is a fault duration during this period, and at this instant, circuit breaker finds that fault is over. There is no longer fault in the line, and then in that case, at this instant of uh, Time and there does the does the angle circuit breaker will reclose the line. Here. So all right, it is this one. And uh, now for, with the above equation, we do uh, some manipulation, right? And then we want to determine what is the area one uh, out of this one, this one, right? So we say we integrate it from delta zero to delta c, and we get uh, integral of the difference of the power here. Right. So, and this is your area one, yeah, which is the accelerating power. Area. Now, once the fault is clear, then the machine will keep on accelerating before it reaches its peak at delta C. Because at, at which point we again have d delta y. Now, because for this situation, uh, for this angle of delta C, now again, it is possible that your delta C is somewhere here. It is also possible, right? For the first uh, d delta characteristic, p delta characteristic, what we have shown and we have defined the area, let us assume that this delta c is somewhere at the point for which for which d delta by dt is zero because it will be at the constant point at the top uh, maximum value. So we have said that it will be that value of uh, critical angle, and in that case, the power will then revert back to the normal operating point. That may be possible, right? Now, at this point, the electrical power is more than mechanical power because when you look at here, when the circuit vector has closed, reclosed the line, electrical power is more than mechanical power. And as such, your uh, uh, accelerating power is actually negative. So you have PE more than PM, and thus accelerating power is actually your de accelerating power. And this will cause the machine to de accelerate. There is a deacceleration, agreed, but machine will continue to swing further because of inertia of the mass. Yeah. The rotor angle will continue to increase here yeah, further, right? And thus you define another area. So in this uh, P delta characteristic, we define we have the area one, that is acceleration area, and we have the area two, that is your deacceleration area, and it is given by. So now we, if you want the stability, then area two must be made equal to area one here now, right? Uh, I have a question here, and then I think maybe uh, now if angle delta is allowed to increase till critical angle. So uh, what I mean to say from a previous slide, if you go back, yeah, we have the situation uh, here. So. We have now, if I say that for uh, we allow the circuit breaker to reclose the line at an angle, at an increased angle of delta 1, and this is equal to critical angle. We, we say that part here. Right. So, saying that, so we allow the delta to increase to the critical angle now. Now, if the critical angle increases, 
that means larger than this delta 1 because this delta 1 with respect to time it is changing and it is increasing it is increasing beyond it will increase to a point beyond which area 2 representation that is the acceleration area may become less than area 1. What is the speed? If I say, if I say that this uh, delta 1 has moved to this one, let's say this is delta C now. If I say delta C is this one, so then your PE will be this one. And let us say the rotor swings up to this one. All right. So, what about the area 2 now? This is your area 2. And in that case, what will be the area 1? Area 1 will be this plus this one. This will be your area. This part, this shaded part, and then again, this shaded part. This will be your area 1. This sum plus this sum. That will be area 1. And area 2 will be only this. So, in this case, area 2 will be always, it will be always uh, less than area 1. So, that means the acceleration, that means whatever the energy which was stored during the area 1, area, region of uh, area 1, it is always more than the acceleration area. Right. So, what about the stability? One? Why? Because delta m is your maximum limit. Because, delta, because here we have defined delta m, that is the intersection of p and the constant and pm, and that limits the area to now. So that means here, if I say delta c is somewhere here, your clearance of the fault, that means reclosing of the line, is somewhere here. And when the angle has increased to this one, so that is your critical line now. So in, for this situation, area 2, it will be up to this one only, because this is a delta m. So, area, remember one thing, area to region, it is actually limited by delta M, which is actually the intersection of PM and PE delta characteristic. So, that's the limit. So, thus area 2, you cannot have more, and thus may equal to area 1, if area 1 is much more. That means, if I say that you delay the reclosing of the line, your circuit breaker is not fast enough to reclose the line. Then area one will, be, will become larger. And then obviously area two is now limited. It is restricted. And thus in that situation, area two will be smaller than area one. And then the uh, stability uh, cannot be achieved for this situation. So that's why uh, area two is limited to delta M what you get. So I will stop here, maybe at this slide I can apply. So applying the calculated criteria, we have this relationship here. And then uh, uh, we define. So now again, same way, now we want to know what should be the critical angle. Same way, uh, we have from the previous relationship, applying that uh, two area being equal and solving it, we get delta C. So now again, uh, similar way, uh, we know uh, how, what should be Delta M because delta M we can know, right? Because this is a non-linear solution equation, and then we have to solve because delta C what we have it actually because we know the circuit breaker operating time and we know the dynamics of the uh, generator rotor actually. So that means how, how much time rotor angle will take to swing from let's say from 28 degree to 35 degree. Or let's say from the uh, how much time will take the rotor to swing from 35 degree to let's say 80 degree or 85 degree. We know that because we know the dynamics of the generator, right? Because let's say the initial operating point of the generator here. In fact, uh, if I go back, because we know that the generator was here. This was the angle, so we know uh, initial operating angle of the generator that is 35 degree. So we know the circuit breaker operating time. So, how much time uh, generator will take to swing? Uh, it will increase up to this angle. We know it. We can estimate it. All right. Because we know the operating time of the breaker and we, how much time the generator will swing from this angle to this angle. We can know that. Right. So, based on that, 
based on this fact, we know this value. And then we can know what's in the delta m. We can find out what is the delta m. Right? So we know, because we know the turbine power, this is the initial power, and we know the delta max, and then we can estimate what will be the delta m. That means the maximum. Because the one thing, here we have said uh, delta m over here, but not necessary. Your delta m can be here also, this one, this line, or your delta m can be here also. I have seen this delta m that is the maximum limit, but you can have your angle area, area two, area two may equal to area one for any angle of delta m. So this can be delta m as well, because that is the maximum limit to make the area two become equal to area one. Because, for example, if I say your uh, clearance is here. This is your line. You know. so for this case, now for this situation, if you allow the delta m over here, that in that case area two will be more than area one. So if the fault is clear somewhere here, then in that case you have to define what should be the delta m. It should be somewhere here, so that area two is equal to area one. So that's why we want to know what should be delta m. So I'll, this is, I will stop here and then uh, maybe we we'll discuss later on. Uh, any query we can, uh, if you have, then we can uh, discuss here.